Assalamu alaikum students I'm Sajina I'm going to handle computer application for you I'm so excited to welcome you all to my YouTube video class Today we are going to know about computer organization in chapter 3 from unit 1 Before getting into the lesson just brush up what is computer hardware and software okay What is a computer Computer is an electronic device that processes the input according to the set of instructions provided to it okay after processing you will be getting a desired output at a very fast rate isn't it then it is a combination of hardware and software now tell me what do you mean by hardware hardware is the physical component of a computer say some examples motherboard memory devices monitor keyboard okay then what about software software is a set of programs or instructions used to operate computers and execute specific task okay that is a software is nothing but a, it is a set of instructions or program by using this instructions or program only you can able to make use of the hardware or the applications whatever it is some of the examples of softwares are mozilla firefox windows media player adobe photoshop google chrome recycle bin internet explorer microsoft office okay these are some of the examples of software now we'll see the introduction about computer organization computer organization deals with the hardware components of a computer system it includes input or output devices the central processing unit storage devices and primary memory Okay, computer organizations means it will deals with the hardware components. What do you mean by hardware? Hardware is the physical component of the computer, right? So the computer organization deals with the hardware components of the computer system. What are the things it will include? It includes input. output devices central processing unit storage devices and primary memory also okay it is concerned with how the various components of a computer hardware operate it also deals with how they are interconnected to implement an architecture specification okay it will concern with how the various components of computer hardware operate and it also deals with how they are interconnected with each other okay the term computer organization looks similar to the term computer architecture but the computer architecture deals with the engineering considerations involved in designing a computer computer architecture means it mainly involve in designing the computer okay on the other hand computer organization means it will deals with the hardware components that are transparent to the programmer that is mainly the computer organization deals with the hardware components of the computer system okay now we'll see the basics of microprocessors the cpu is the major component of a computer which performs all the tasks so it is known as brain of the computer right this is realized by the microprocessor which is an integrated circuit this my microprocessor is an integrated circuit that contains all the functions of a cpu okay so don't think this microprocessor and cpu are same both are different because the central processing unit is a chip that function as a brain of the computer it is made up of millions of transistors okay but microprocessor or the circuitry that surround the cpu the microprocessor is more than the cpu it contains other processor like the graphics processor unit sound cards and network cards are encased in the microprocessor okay so cpu is a part of the microprocessor but a microprocessor is more than the cpu okay so this microprocessor were first introduced in early 1970s the first general purpose microprocessor 4004 was developed by intel inc okay now we'll see the definition for microprocessor the microprocessor is a programmable multi purpose silicon chip okay it is driven by clock pulse it accepts input as a binary data and after processing it provides the output data as per the instructions stored in the memory now look at the block diagram of a microprocessor see input microprocessor output memory okay the microprocessor will get the accept the input as a binary data after accepting the input it will process and it will deliver the output and the result will be stored in the memory otherwise it will fetch the information or instruction from the memory and it will process and again it will store in the memory also okay this is the block diagram of the microprocessor based system okay 
the microprocessor is made up of three main units they are arithmetic logic unit that is alu second one is control unit third one is registers that is also known as internal memory okay the first one arithmetic and logic unit is mainly used to perform arithmetic and logical instruction based on computer instructions arithmetic and logical instructions means arithmetic uh, addition subtractions multiplication divisions okay these are all comes under arithmetic logical instructions or logical calculations means logical and logical or okay logical not is there okay for using for performing these type of operations it will use arithmetic logic unit then the second one is control unit this control unit is mainly used to control the overall operation of a computer through signals third one is registers that is an also known as internal memory they are mainly this internal memory this register is used to hold the intermediate instructions and data for the execution of a processor that intermediate results will be stored in this register okay these are the three main units of microprocessor okay now we will see the characteristics of microprocessors the microprocessors performance depend upon the following characteristics first one is clock speed second one instruction set third one is word size we'll see one by one first one is clock speed every microprocessor has an internal clock that regulates the speed at which they execute the instruction so in the every microprocessor itself it has an internal clock okay that internal clock will regulate the speed at which it execute the instruction execute in the sense it will deliver the output okay the speed at which the microprocessor execute instructions is called the clock speed okay the clock speed is measured in megahertz m h z or in gigahertz g h z okay second characteristic is instruction set a command which is given to a computer to perform an operation on data is called an instruction okay what are the commands we are giving to the computer to perform an operation that is known as an instruction okay if i ask you to do write your homework complete your assignment means that is an instructions right so the command which is given to the computer to perform an operation on data that is called an instruction basic set of machine level instructions that a microprocessor is designed to execute is called as an instruction set okay what do you mean by instruction set that is a set of machine level instructions because a computer understands only the machine level language not our spoken english or local languages and all computers knows only the under, computer can able to understand only the machine language that is zeros and ones okay what are the instructions we are giving to the computer it will convert it into the language that is a machine language then only it will perform that particular instructions okay so basic set of machine level instructions that a microprocessor is designed to execute is called as an instruction set okay this instruction set carries out the following type of operations what are they data transfer arithmetic operations logical operations control flow and input output okay these are the five types of operations that this instruction set carries okay now we'll see the third characteristics of microprocessor that is word size the number of bits that can be processed by a processor in a single instruction is called as word size bits what do you mean by bits a bit is the short form of binary digit which can be 0 or 1 it is the basic unit of data in a computer okay any kind of data like uh, number alphabet special character should be converted to 0 or 1 which can be understood by the computer 0 and 1 that the computer can understand is called machine language okay what are the things what are the characters you are giving in as a instruction to the computer the computer will convert that into machine language which it understand so the machine language is nothing but binary number that is zeros and one okay so the bit is the short form of binary digits which can be zero or one it is the basic unit of data in computer so that number of bits that can be processed by a processor in a single instruction it's called as word size okay word size determines the amount of ram that can be accessed by a microprocessor at one time and the total number of pins on the microprocessor okay how much that is the total number of input and output pins in turn determines the architecture of a microprocessor okay for example if a uh, microprocessor that is intel 4004 is a 4 bit processor means 
it has four input pin and four output pins that is number of output pin is always equal to the number of input pin so it can process four bits at a time so this the 4004 is a four bit processor clear that is the number of the bits that the process by a processor in a single instruction is called a word size okay by using this word size you can determine the amount of ram that can be accessed by the microprocessor okay now we'll see the data communication between cpu and memory what do you mean by cpu cpu is a central processing unit it is a major component of the computer which performs all tasks right then what about memory memory is used to store data and instructions right memory computer memory is a storage space in the computer where data and instructions are stored now we'll see how the data communicates between cpu and memory okay the central processing unit has two type of registers one is memory data register that is mdr other is memory address register that is mar this memory data register register mdr always keeps the data which is transferred between memory and cpu okay what will be in the mdr it will always keep the data which is transferred between memory and cpu then what about mar mar it holds the memory location of data that needs to be accessed okay in mar it will holds the memory location of data okay what are the data is going to access that data's memory location will be stored in mar okay next one is pc pc is a program counter okay program counter is a special register in the cpu which always keeps the address of the next instructions to be executed okay in this pc it is a special register in the cpu in that pc will always keeps the address of the next instruction suppose if one instruction is processing or accessing means it in pc it will keep ready the next instructions to be executed okay now we'll see about bus a bus is a collection of wires used for communication between the internal components of a computer okay this is a bus is nothing but a, it's a collection of wires okay by using this wires only you can able to communicate between the internal components of the computer okay the word in the ram ram stands for random access memory okay the word in the ram has the same size this number of bits as a memory data register that is mdr if the processor is an 8 bit processor like intel 8085 its mdr and the word in the ram both have 8 bits okay so the processor also 8 bit processor and the mdr capacity also that is memory data register capacity also 8 bit and the ram capacity also 8 bit okay there are two operation that can takes place during the data communications between cpu and memory they are read operation and write operation read operation means it will read the data from ram main memory to mdr that is memory data register then write operation means it after processing it will write the data it will save the store the output from memory data register to the ram memory that is the read operation transfer the data that is bit from word means ram main ram to memory data register then the write operation transfer the data that is bit from memory data register to word word is nothing but ram okay these are all about data communications between cpu and memory now we'll see the types of microprocessors microprocessors can be classified based on the two categories first one is the width of the data that can be processed second one the instruction set okay based on these two categories only the types of microprocessors can be classified now we'll see the first criteria that is classification of microprocessors based on the data width depending on the data width the microprocessors can process instructions okay so if suppose uh, the data width of a microprocessor is 8 bit means it can able to access only 8 bit data okay so the microprocessor can be classified as 8 bit microprocessor 16 bit microprocessor 32 bit microprocessor and 64 bit microprocessor okay if it is 64 bit microprocessor processor means at a single interval at a one interval it can able to access 16 bit data okay 
Now we'll see the classification of microprocessors based on instruction set. What is instruction set? Basic set of machine level instructions that a microprocessor is designed to execute is called as an instruction set, right? So the size of the instruction set is another important consideration while categorizing microprocessor. So there are two types of microprocessor as based on this instruction set. First one is reduced instruction set computer that is RISC. Second one is complex instruction set computer Cisco. This reduced instruction set computers have a small set of highly optimized instructions. Okay. It has only small set of instructions only it will have. Okay. Then second one is complex instruction set. It is the support hundreds of instructions. That is a computer but supporting sys can accomplish a wide variety of tasks. Okay? This is mainly used for personal computers. You see the examples for RISC and sys. Examples of RISC processors are Pentium 4, Intel P6, AMD K6 and K7. And the examples of sys processors are Intel 386 and 486, Pentium, Pentium 2 and 3 and Motorola 68000. Okay, these are the two types of microprocessor based on this instruction set. Okay. Now we'll see you about memory devices. A memory is just like a human brain. It is used to store data and instructions. Computer memory is a storage space in the computer where data and instructions are stored. Okay, there are two types of accessing methods to access the memory. They are sequential access and random access. In sequential access, the memory is accessed in an orderly manner from starting to End. So, sequential means what? Line by line, one by one. Based on the order only, it will access. But in random access, any byte of memory can be accessed directly without navigating through previous bytes. Okay, here random means what? You can able to access any byte from anywhere. Okay, not in order. So, different memory devices are arranged according to the capacity, speed, and cost as shown in the figure okay based on the capacity speed and cost it may vary okay look at the figure here three memory devices see catchy memory main memory hard disk these are the memory devices they are arranged according to the capacity speed cost right see from hard disk to catch memory it is smaller capacity faster access and higher cost then from catchy memory to hard disk it is larger capacity slower access time and lower cost now we'll see about random access memory RAM. The main memory is otherwise known as random access memory. Okay? This is available in computers in the form of integrated circuit that is IC. It is the place in a computer where the operating system, application programs and the data in the current use are kept temporarily so that they can be accessed by the computer's processor. Okay, In RAM, all the details, all the application program, all the operating systems, the current data what we are using that will be kept temporarily so that we can easily access it okay the smallest unit of information that can be stored in the memory is called as bit that you know already right so the memory can be accessed by the collection of eight bits which is called as byte okay a bit may be zero or one either zero or one okay byte is equal to 8 bit 8 bits is equal to 1 byte okay so the memory can be accessed by the collection of 8 bits which is called as byte okay? ram is a volatile memory volatile means the information stored in it is not permanent as soon as the power is turned off whatever data that resides in the ram is lost okay that is volatile memory volatile memory means the information stored in it is not permanent as soon as the power shut down or if we had any issues means we can't able to back up the data okay as soon as the power is turned off whatever data is that resides in the ram will be lost okay then it allows both read and write operations okay these are all about random access memory okay now we'll see the types of ram random access memory there are two basic types of ram they are dynamic ram that is dram second one is static ram sram these two types differ in the technology they use to hold data in dynamic ram being it is a common type needs to be refreshed frequently so frequently we have to refresh the data in static ram needs to be refreshed less often okay which makes it faster so hence static ram is more expensive than dynamic ram 
why because in dynamic ram we have to save the data by refreshing frequently okay but in static ram you can refresh the data less often compared to dynamic ram okay next memory is read only memory rom read only memory refers to a special memory in a computer with pre recorded data at manufacturing time which cannot be modified okay in read only memory it is a special memory okay while manufacturing time itself it is all the soft all the software all the operating system will be pre recorded okay once it is recorded means you can't able to modify that that type of memory is known as rom read only memory we can able to read only okay the stored programs that start the computer and perform diagnostics are available in roms okay so in roms only the important and the special programs only will be stored okay in the here for starting the computer as the bios is there right operating system these type of software operating systems all the applications which is so important for the computer to operate will be stored in this rom rom stores critical programs such as the program that boots the computer then uh, once the data has been written on to the rom chip it cannot be modified or removed and can only be read rom retains its content even when the computer is turned off okay so rom is called as non volatile memory rom is known as non volatile memory because even the computer is turned off that software that the program that the data will be remain okay so it is known as non volatile memory that is the main difference between ram and rom ram is a volatile memory here the information stored in it is not permanent as soon as the power is turned off whatever data is in the system that will get lost but here read only memory even the power turned off also the content remains same okay in rom we having three different types of memory first one is programmable read only memory that is prom second one is erasable programmable read only memory e prom third one is electrically erasable programmable read only memory e e prom okay now we'll see one by one first one programmable read only memory prom programmable read only memory is also a non volatile memory okay no non volatile memory means what even the computer is turned off the contents remain same okay that type of memory is known as non volatile memory so prom is also a non volatile memory on which data can be returned only once once a program has been returned onto a prom it remains there forever okay unlike the main memory unlike the ram proms retain their contents even when the computer is turned off okay so this type of memory is known as non volatile memory the prom differs from rom how prom is manufactured as a blank memory but rom is manufactured by pre recorded programs and data right but here prom is manufactured as a blank memory whereas rom is programmed during the manufacturing process itself right prom programmer or a prom burner is used to write data to a prom chip okay who will see while manufacturing time itself the prom chip as manufactured as a blank okay as a blank memory only it will manufacture then after that according to our customer needs the prom programmer or prom burner okay those are writing on the prom chip we used to call them as a prom programmer or prom burner okay that prom programmer or a prom burner is used to write data onto the prom chip okay the process of programming a prom is called burning the prom okay second type of rom is erasable programmable read only memory e prom okay in the name itself we can able to understand what is e prom right erasable programmable read only memory is yes. erasable programmable read only memory is a special type of memory which serves as a prom but the content can be erased using ultraviolet rays okay but pro in prom you can't able to erase any data or any program but here in e prom you can able to erase the content by using this ultraviolet rays okay e prom retains its contents until it is exposed to ultraviolet rays okay the ultraviolet li light 
clears its content making it possible to reprogram the memory okay if you want to update or if you want to change any program or anything in the chip eprom means you just you want to expose ultraviolet light into it okay the ultraviolet light clears its content okay after clearing the content you can able to reprogram the memory again according to your need hmm? an eprom prom differs from a prom prom can be written only once and cannot be erased but in eprom you can be erased by using the ultraviolet light okay now we'll see the third type of rom that is electrically erasable programmable read only memory ee prom so electrically erasable programmable read only memory is a special type of prom that can be erased by exposing it to an electrical charge listen in e prom you have to use ultraviolet light to to erase the content but here in ee prom you have to use electrical charge to erase the content okay like other type of prom ee prom retains its content even when the power is turned off okay comparing with all other type of prom ee prom is slower in performance i will see about catchy memory catchy memory is a very high speed and expensive memory which is used to speed up the memory retrieval process memory retrieval process in the sense for each and every time cpu want to retrieve data or fetch data from the memory right for speeding up the memory fetching the or retrieval data from the memory we are using this catchy memory okay this cost is very high but its size is very small okay every time the cpu wants to fetch the data from the main memory so it will take more time to execute okay so what they introduce means they introduce the catchy memory this is extremely fast memory which store data that is frequently accessed okay and if possible the data that is closer to it for example if your main memory is your shelf full of books okay your catchy is like your study table when you study you fetch all the books you think would be of use and arrange them on your study table right once you are done you keep it back in the shelf the same concept only we are applying here catchy memory also okay this helps to achieve the fast response time it is where respond time is also known as access time it refers to how quickly the memory can be respond to a read or write request okay here look at the figure it shows the arrangement of catchy memory between the cpu on the main memory okay cpu is here so next one is catchy then the main memory okay the catchy what are the data what are the content you are frequently using that will be saved in the catchy so the cpu will fetch the um, uh, data or instructions from um, the input from the catchy memory and it will process and again it will store it in the main memory it, okay so from cpu to catchy memory if it fetch from catchy memory means it the uh, response time is so fast right so otherwise if there is no catchy memory means for each and every time it want to fetch from the main memory so it its response time will become slow clear now we'll see about secondary storage devices a computer generally has limited amount of main memory which is expensive and volatile volatile means the content will be lost when the power is turned off right our computer turned off to store data and programs permanently second storage devices are used second storage devices serve as a supportive storage to move main memory and they are non volatile in nature second storage is also called as backup storage okay see second storage devices and non volatile memory though if the current is shut down or turn off also the content will remain same okay so we having so many secondary devices hard disk compact disk digital D, digital versatile disk or digital video disk dvd then um, uh, pen drive is there then blu ray disk is are there right so now we'll see one by one that first one is hard disk hard disk is a magnetic disk on which you can store data okay the hard disk has a stacked arrangements of disk accessed by a pair of heads for each of the disk the hard disk comes with a single or double sided disk okay now we'll see about cd that is compact disk a cd or cd rom is made from 1.2 mm thick polycarbonate plastic material okay a thin layer of aluminum or gold is applied to the surface either it may be a aluminum or gold okay cd data is represented as a tiny indentation that is known as bits it is enclosed in 
the spiral track molded into the top of the polycarbonate layer. Okay. The areas between the pits are known as lamp. A motor within the CD player rotates the disc. The capacity of an ordinary CD-ROM is 700 MB. Next one is digital versatile disc disc or digital video disc that is DVD. The DVD is an optical disc capable of storing up to 4.7 GB of data. Okay, That is a more than 6 times what a CD can hold. DVD are often used to store movies at a better quality like CDs and DVDs are read with a laser. The disc can have one or two sides and one or two layers of data per side. The number of sides and layer determine how much it can can hold. Double layer sides are usually gold colored while single layer sides are usually silver colored like a CD. Okay. Now we'll see about flash memory. Flash memory is an electronic non-volatile computer storage medium that can be electrically erased and reprogrammed. Okay, You can erase electrically and you can reprogram it again. They are either EEPROM or EEPROM. Examples for flash memories are pen drives, memory cards, etc. Flash memories can be used in personal computer, personal digital assistant that is PDE, digital audio players, digital cameras and mobile phones. Nowadays we are using these types of memory, right? Yeah. Flash memory offers fast access time. The time taken to read or write a character in memory is called as an access time. Okay, what do you mean by access time? The time taken to read or write a character in a memory is called access time. The capacity of flash memory varies from 1 gigabyte to 2 terabyte. Okay. Next second storage device is a Blu-ray disc. Blu-ray disc is a high density optical disc similar to DVD. Blu-ray is a type of disc used for PlayStation games and for playing high definition that is HD movies. Okay. A double layer Blu-ray disc can store up to 50 GB that is 50 gigabytes of data. This is more than 5 times the capacity of a DVD and about 70 times of a CD. Okay. DVD uses a red laser to read and write data but Blu-ray uses a blue violet laser to write hence it is called as Blu-ray. Okay. DVD use red laser to read and write but here in Blu-ray it use blue violet laser to write. Now we will see about ports and interfaces. The motherboard of a computer has many I.O. sockets that is input output sockets that are connected to the ports and interfaces found on the rear side of the computer. Okay. The external devices can be connected to the ports and interfaces. By using that ports and interfaces only you can able to connect the external devices like keyboard, mouse, uh, speaker printer etc okay now we'll see various types of ports first one is serial port but this is this port is mainly used to connect the external devices okay this is actually found in old computers okay next one is parallel port this is used to connect the printers but this is also found in old computers next one is usb port this is to connect external devices like uh, camera scanner mobile phones external hard disk and printers to the computer now what is for connecting the printer also we are using USB ports only right the next one in this USB ports we are having the versions USB 3.0 that is 3.0 this is the third major version of a universal serial bus what is the full form for USB universal serial bus okay this is standard to connect computers with other electronic gadgets okay here you have you can be able to see the USB 3.0 ports right this is a 3.0 ports. It can transfer data up to 5 GB per second. Okay. USB 3.1 and USB 3.2 are also released. The next one is VGA connector. So the VGA stands for video graphics adapter. This is used to connect a monitor or any display devices like LCD projector and all. For connecting this, we have to use this VGA connector look at the figure right the next one is audio plugs to connect sound speakers microphone headphones and all you have to use this audio plugs the next one is ps2 ports this is mainly used to connect mouse and keyboard to pc pc means personal computer okay next one is scsi port scsi stands for small computer system interface this port is mainly used to connect the hardest external hardest and network connectors okay then Last but not least, HDMI, High Definition Multimedia Interface. This is an audio-video interface 
which transfer the uncompressed video and audio data from a video controller to a compatible computer monitor or LCD projector or digital television. Okay, this is mainly used to transfer uncompressed video to or video or audio from a video controller to a computer or LCD projector or digital television. Okay, look at that picture of HDMI also. Let's summarize this lesson. Microprocessor. The microprocessor is a programmable multipurpose silicon chip. Okay, there are three main units in microprocessor. They are arithmetic and logic unit, control unit, and registers. Right. Then characteristics of microprocessor. The microprocessor performance depends on clock speed, instruction set, and word size. The next one is data communications between CPU and memory. This is done by using MDR and MAR in PC. The next one is types of microprocessor. Microprocessor can be classified based on the width of the data that can be processed. Second one, the instruction set. The next one is memory devices. Memory, computer memory is the storage space in the computer where data and instructions are stored. Okay, there are two different types of memory that is random access memory and read only memory. In random access memory, we are having two types. One is DRAM, other is SRAM. And then ROM, read only memory, we are having three different types. First one is PROM, programmable read only memory. Second one, EPROM, erasable programmable read only memory. Third one, electrically erasable programmable read only memory. Then, catchy memory also there. And last, secondary storage devices. It is mainly used to store data and program permanently. Okay, there are so many secondary storage devices are there. We have seen hard disk, compact disk, disk DVD, flash memory, Blu-ray. Right. The next one is ports and interface. By using the sports and interfaces, we can be able to connect the external devices to the computer. Okay, that's all about this lesson. I hope you all understood, students. Thank you.